Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Mark, this is Spagaver's Garage. And today uh, we're out here in my garage. I've got the cars pulled out. Uh, I've got three cars out there that all need a wash right now. And I'm sure that my oldest son will be here uh, later today and he's gonna need a wash as well. So four cars that all need a wash. So I've got everything over here kind of set up. I've got the power washer, I've got the foam cannon, all that stuff ready to go. Uh, should be warmed up, should be almost 70 today. It, the weather fluctuates so much here in Oklahoma. One day it's, it's highs in the 20s, the next day we're at 70. Monday is supposed to be a high of like 75 to 78, but then the low on Tuesday is like 15 degrees. So definitely some, some big fluctuations. Uh, so what's been going on with the, the Supra? I am still waiting on the front tires. The rear tires are in. I uh, haven't gotten them mounted up yet. I'm just gonna do it all at once. I've got the pressure sensors. I've got the wheels. The rears are in and sitting there waiting for me, just waiting for the front tires to come in. Once they're in, we'll drop the wheels, sensors off, get them mounted, balanced, and then I'll get them home. I will ceramic coat them, and then we'll swap out wheels and tires. Uh, at least once it starts to warm up, once it's consistently warm, or on those days where it's just warm and we wanna go have, have some fun, uh, we'll swap them out. So that that's going on. Uh, my son's Audi TT, that, has some work that needs to be done to it. The uh, front passenger side inner CV joint, the uh, the boot is torn. And so it's been slinging a little bit of, of grease. So we wanna get that pulled off. Uh, I've got a replacement boot coming in. I've got the replacement grease. We're gonna take it apart. I've got all the tools to do it. We're gonna get it jacked up. We're gonna pull everything apart and we're gonna inspect it and see whether or not we can salvage it. I don't think it has been leaking uh, grease to the point where it has been like the, the friction has caused any any problems but we won't really know until we get it apart and take a look at it so we will do that and that's going to be on video coming up pretty soon uh next weekend next sunday a week from today is the next hallett day uh, so hallett motor speedway we're going up there as the cruising oklahoma group and we're going to be spending uh, the whole day up there and we're going to get to do some uh what we're calling spirited parade laps. It's not like a high performance driving session or anything like that where you're going all out and really pushing the limits of your car, but it's out there in groups of like 10 to 20 cars, no passing allowed, uh, but you're allowed to go out there and, and push it a little bit and have some fun. Last year, it was an absolute blast. Uh, everyone loved it, and so that's why we're going back again this year. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, other than that, Looking at Thursday, probably getting the Supra on the dyno. Uh, still trying to work out a couple of details there, but it looks like that's coming together and we should have it on the dyno Thursday evening. So uh, I will definitely take the camera out there and make sure that everyone gets a chance to see that. But today, what I wanted to do is, uh, you guys know that I'm running methanol. I'm running e-blend and methanol on the tune that I've got. And so I'm doing a water methanol blend you can go different routes with that. You can go with, uh, you know, just get boost juice from, from Snow Performance, and that's a 49% methanol, 51% distilled water mix. But if you really, and that's good, that's great for cooling, that's great for uh, octane boosting, but if you really want to kind of get a little bit more out of it, like a 75-25 or even a, a, a pure 100% methanol, is probably a better way to go, but you gotta make sure that you're tuned for it. And so we've been working with a 7525, that's what I've got in there right now. And uh, there are some cautions to that. Methanol is highly flammable, so if you get a leak in the engine bay, uh, you could have some serious issues. So make sure you're aware of that. Hey, I'm not, a, I'm not advocating you guys do anything. I'm just telling you what I do so that you have some, some knowledge about it. All right, so uh, methanol blends. So 7525. Now, a lot of people think that you can just go and get distilled water, a thing of methanol, mix it uh, by volume. And it's not by volume, it's actually by weight. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today is mixing up a 7525 batch of methanol. And we're gonna talk through some of the, how I got there, uh, pieces of it. So let's go, let's do this. Okay, so in this locker right here is where I keep my methanol and my blends. Also got a bunch of other stuff in here, but down here is what we're looking at down here on the bottom floor. So I've got 
an empty bottle that uh, this was my last mix. I used it. I just topped off mine. And so I'm empty. I'm going to make sure that I have enough left. You're going to need distilled water. I actually like to use some food coloring to make sure that I, I know uh, how much I have in my reservoir. The reservoir is like a, uh, you know, it's, it's transparent like this. But if you have water in there, or if you have it just clear, it's really hard to see where it is. Adding a couple of drops really helps. You could use, like I said, you could use boost juice. This is the 49, 51%, so 49% methanol. We're going for something a little bit more potent with a 75%. So I'm gonna use this as a, a baseline to get a good weight of what a full bottle is like. And then I'm actually gonna probably go a little bit less than that. Okay, so we've got everything set up here and we're ready to do it. Uh, I redid the calculations and I think I'm gonna go, just so that I have room in the top of this bottle, I'm gonna go 75 ounces of methanol, 25 ounces of water, and that's gonna give me that perfect 75-25 ratio. So we're gonna start. There is a little bit of residual uh, boost juice in here, so it is slightly pink, uh, not a big deal at all. So we're gonna add 75 ounces. I've got the scale torn. Uh, I hit tear, so we're ready to go. I've got some towels right here in case I spill any, but we're gonna try and be careful and load up 75 ounces. It's 45, 55, 62, 70, 74 and a half, 74.8, 75.05. I'll take that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is since we have the level for this, I'm gonna take that out of there real quick. And I'm gonna mark the area. So I'm just gonna put a little tick mark with an arrow down and then put meth so that I know next time when I go to fill this, if I fill it to that line and then fill it to the next line with water. So I know that it's meth below here because I put the line and put down meth now we'll re-tear this. We will put this back in, tear it again. And we'll put 25 ounces of water in here. This is distilled water. It's gotta be distilled water. You don't want any contaminants getting in there. There's 10. There's 20. There's 25.05, so pretty much perfect on the dot. All right, so now I'm gonna mark where the water is. So same, same general thing, water. So now you can see, let me bring that up there for you. So you can see those two marks that I made. One telling me where the meth is, one telling me where the water is. Now, like I said, it's really hard to see uh, this in the tank when it's clear. So we're gonna put three drops of food coloring in there. One, two, three. It's pretty potent stuff. So uh, that will make a, a big difference, big impact right there. Get this off the outside. Make sure that's closed, push it down, and put the cap back on. We'll shake it up, and I'll show you what we got. So now we've got this mixture. It's a 75-25% mixture. It's got a nice color, so you can see it in that tank. Very easy to see what the level is, and I can see if it's running through the lines. That's another important piece, is that if I have a problem, and I don't, don't think I'm getting meth, 
at the injectors, I can see whether or not there's actually fuel or methanol in the lines. And so you can see what I'm talking about. Here are my two injector ports and you can see the line and I can see that I've got fluid in there. And so it's easy to tell whether or not it's actually feeding into the injectors because there's stuff in the line there. Now over here's my reservoir. It's a little bit hidden, but even with it being underneath that panel, I can see that it has fluid in it without having to take it apart. I'll show you. So even though it is underneath that cover, without even taking it apart, I can see that there is fluid right there. You can see the line. And so I can see that it is about three quarters of the way full right now. So there you go, guys. Not a difficult process at all, but one that you wanna make sure that you get right. And you're doing it by weight and not volume so that you get the outcome that you're actually looking for. And so we're talking apples to apples every time. All right, appreciate you guys checking this out. If any questions, any comments, leave them down below. If you haven't done so before, go hit that subscribe button. When you do, right next to it, there'll be a little bell icon. If you hit that, you'll get notifications every time we upload a video. We got lots of cool stuff coming up. Audi work, we've got the uh, dyno day, hopefully wheels and tires going on soon. We've got the day at Hallett up at the track. So make sure that you tune in, check back. Gonna be lots of fun stuff. Appreciate you guys checking this out. See you next time.